You're listening to Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Today's episode, How to Build a Bomb Shelter. Dum, dum, diddle, dum, dum. There was a turtle by the name of Bert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He ducked and covered. Rob Kuttner, you wrote a book called Apocalypse How that describes how to survive the end of days. And, and this is something that you see as definitely going to happen? Well, I think certainly. Um, I outline nine different scenarios, which I think are the most likely. Anything from nuclear war to bioepidemic, environmental catastrophe, or, of course, the rapture. Uh-huh. And, and you see this as, as something that will be happening soon? Well, I think the science isn't good enough to know. Um, a lot of people are looking at 2012 as a possible date. The Mayan calendar actually said that there would be some kind of great transformation in December 2012, which is great because it's like right at the height of Christmas book buying season. So for me, that would be you know, really a key time, I think, for sales. You don't seem like terribly troubled by the, the, the fact that Armageddon is upon us. Oh, quite the contrary. I actually believe um, that the world after the apocalypse will be much better than the current world. You know, you can get around to doing all the things you didn't have time to do before because, you know, it's kind of the ultimate permanent weekend. There's no more work day. And, and that's one of the things that you come back to time and again uh, in the book about how you are finally forced into living in the moment mm-hmm. because there, there just might not be a future. Right, right. You get to sleep in. You get to write that novel that you've always been wanting to write. Travel the world. It'll be probably much smaller, the safe place that you can travel. Yeah, what would, what would there be to see, do you think, that would be left standing? Everyone is always spending thousands and thousands of dollars to go and see these ruins, you know, going all the way to you know Greece and seeing the Parthenon or going to you know, Machu Picchu or something like that. Hey, you've got ruins in your backyard. Boom, there's your vacation spot right there. Right. But, you know, what about, like, the, the, the hellfires and the, 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 you know, possible nuclear mutation and food will be scarce? And... Well, that's the thing, too. I, as I talk about in one of the chapters, mm-hmm. if there's not as much food around, uh, it's going to be easier to stick to your diet. You're going to really have that lean, skeletal look that the supermodels have perfected. Mm-hmm. And that will be accessible for anyone, I think. Well, and, the, you know, yeah. so many excuses for not doing exercise right now. I mean, you'll be very likely in the apocalyptic scenario, you'll be running from something. So right there, you've got no excuse not to do your jogging. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, I should also mention that what, uh, in the last pages of the book, one of, one of the bleaker, I would say, uh, tidbits that you, that you have in there is the actual nutritional information uh, for the book itself, if it came down to having to actually eat the book. Yeah, again, you say bleak, but what I look at is like there's no scenario that can throw you. Uh, I have a page that explains how the book is high in protein and trace minerals and, uh, again, low in trans fats. Mm -hmm. And if all else fails, my last bonus page is the page of surrender. This is basically a blank white page that you can attach to a stick and make a white flag out of. And, and, And is there anything that we could do at this point in time to prepare? Oh, there's a lot of things. So in one chapter, I list some items that you want to hoard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a chapter on housing where we talk about how you can build your dream refuge now. You don't want to wait. Really just personalizing any space you have, whether that is an air raid shelter, a cave, or just a hole in the ground. And the important thing is um, make it your hole. Make it your hole, right. I mean, it, uh, what I try to do is cover like just some very practical tips uh, as to how to prepare yourself. And also, you know, psychologically, how to enjoy it. Um, if you have trouble dating, you could actually be the last man on earth. You know, you've heard that phrase before. It's sort of an exaggeration, but... Um, like I wouldn't date you if you were the last yeah, man on earth. Yeah, now you get a chance to call those women's bluff. And and do you have, uh, of, of the different possible scenarios that you've uh, listed, uh, you know, nuclear, asteroid, do you, do you have a favorite that, that you, I mean, I, I don't know if it's appropriate to say looking forward to, but I mean, do, do, do you have a preference? Um, I think the ones that I'm most interested in are the... Um, the rise of the machines, you know, where our, our devices become self-aware and more intelligent and take over. Uh, of course, that will happen, you know, right after the warranties expire. That's the way it always works out. Um, I also like the um, the idea of zombies. Zombies? I think what I like about zombies is this, that they're so interested in brains. You know, in our culture, we're so superficial, we're always looking at appearance, and there's just so little attention paid to education that you have a bunch of people who just go around 
yelling brains all the time. It's just like, thank you. That's the wake-up call I think we need. And, and, and none, of this, none of this terrifies you? No, because I think that, you know, given my, the font of wisdom that I've collected for myself about the topic, that mm-hmm. if I do survive, mm-hmm. it, I'll come out of the, the ashes as, you know, sort of a, a demigod of wisdom, I think. I could be like, you know, basically the best daddy in the world. You know, mm-hmm. my daddy is more apocalyptically prepared than yours. You know, something I want to hear my kid boasting on the smoking remains of the playground. And will you be disappointed if you don't if you don't make it if you don't make it to see it? Well, you know what I can take I can take consolation knowing the fact that my children or possibly my grandchildren will see the end of the world. I guess I yeah that's consoling. Um, Rob, thanks so much for for talking to me about your book. Well, thanks. I hope I don't end up seeing you in hell. Right, <laughs> me too. I hope it all ends well or just ends. Now tell me right out loud, what are you supposed to do when you see the flash? Hello? Hey, Howard. Hey, John. Hey, um, I'm sorry to bother, but uh, I left for work this morning, and I'm kind of afraid that I, I, I didn't turn off my stove. Would you mind running by my place just to check it out? What, you were like, you were, like cooking mind? this morning, and then you... You may have not have shut the element or something? Yeah, I was making some breakfast before I left for work, and I probably turned I, it I, off. You're but concerned about it, and you think you might have left it on. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of distracting me. Would you mind? Oh, you're catching me at a an odd moment in my life. In your life? Yeah. What are you talking about, Howard? I've kind of committed to something today. I'm taking it very seriously. What did you commit to, that you're not going to do me any favors anymore? No, no, I, I'm always going to be there for you for whatever I can do. Well, thanks. Anything that you need, I'll be at your service. Well, I appreciate that. Just providing that I don't have to leave my home. And wh- why is that? Because I, Howard Enoch Neil Chakwitz, I'm a shut-in. You're a shut-in now. I'm not going to leave the house ever again. That's not now. This has always been the case. I, it's always. I've been a, a shut-in in a shut-out's body. An open out. I was out and open. Okay, look, look, look. Howard, people who are shut-ins often, you know, I mean, they they might have physical or mental things in their way from allowing them to get out as much. I mean, Howard, that's not the case. Mine is more of a spiritual nature. Physically, I guess I can move around and stuff, but I have no reason to be outside. Everything I need is in these four walls. I got my floor. I got my TV. I got my dog, Desmond. I got food. How are you going to keep getting food? I mean, I'll take visitors. Of course, there are going to be people who are going to deliver food and kids who are going to shovel my walk and stand in the window and point at me and laugh. And Well, I'm not going to come by. Sure, you'll come by. No, I'm not going to come by. It sounds awful. No, it's going to be very pleasant. I'm going to be happy. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What, what brought this on? Even from my earliest memories as a child, I remember being taken to the circus by my dad. You know, alongside the trapeze artists and the clowns and the elephants, I, I remember the shut-in. The circus shut-in. What do you... It had such an impact on me. Howard, there's no such thing as a circus yeah, shut-in. Yeah, a woman. I remember looking through a small window, and she was lying on this frilly bed, and she was really, really enormous, and just like this weird world of isolation and loneliness, but there was a beauty to it. She had this big Star of David rhinestone brooch on her blouse. Wait, 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 wait. All the kids were looking through the window. I okay, remember. first of all, Howard... Yeah. That wasn't a circus. That was an old age home, okay? And that wasn't oh, a no, shut-in. My memory that was not a shut-in. That was your Aunt Heiche. You've shown me photographs of this woman. She wears like a big brooch of the of the of the Star of David. Oh. With a floral house coat. She she didn't juggle? I remember juggling. Anyway, this doesn't make a difference. You know, I'm a recluse. I, I want to be isolated, you know? Okay, and who who who's gonna walk Desmond? This has already been thought of. I've made a very, very long leash. I basically let him out slowly down the stairs. It's a long, long leash. If there's any trouble I can yank him right back. And he does his business. He likes it. Desmond's happy. Dogs to... are not happy. The dogs want to go for walks. Do you even know Desmond? I, well, I know dogs. He's not I... jumping through flaming hoops. Okay, he's very content. Sleeping on the sofa, eating meat snacks. Just like his old man. Okay, Howard, I feel like there's something you're not telling me. No. What happened? No, there's nothing. What's made you turn your back on, on the outside world? Nothing. Just the world's a stupid place, and I don't have anything to do with it. No. Nah. Nish Vermeer. So you're just never going to leave the house again? I'm never going to leave the house again. Ever? For what? Name things. For what? What's out there for me? I don't even know where to start. I... Name things. Stop talking. So head. What, what about sunshine? Bah. Watching kids play in the park. Overrated. Trees. Yeah, now that's going to drag me out of the house there. Nothing like a tree. Birds. Bah. Birds. 
this is all stuff I can see from my window. I Howard, what about the ocean? What about what about travel? I hate it. I hate everything. Did you have a fight with Nick the delivery man? Is that it? No, I didn't have a fight with Nick. I don't even care about delivery did, anymore. Did, did Desmond bite you? No, he didn't bite me. I wish he would. Yeah, I mean, is it is it something with a girl? No, it's not. It's nothing like that. It's a girl, isn't it? You know that girl that works at the fruit store, the brown hair, the glasses. Uh, you you've you've pointed her out to me before. You like this girl. You know, I go into that store sometimes, just talk to her a little bit or something, make my face known. Anyway, I walk in the other day just under the pretense of needing something, whatever. I grab a big jar of grape jelly, something I don't really need, but you know. What are you talking about? You love grape jelly. Yeah, I do love grape. I'm trying to tell a story here, okay? Okay, just sorry. Get this through. Right. Oh my God. I walk in. I grab the grape jelly. I go to talk to her. I'm trying to think what I want to say. I guess I got so nervous, my hands got all sweaty. The grape jelly slips out of my hand, and on this freak accident, it hits the corner of the table. And the grape jelly in the glass, it all goes flying. All of her shoes, these like brand new shoes. Oh, I'm sorry. And she looks at me. She says, "Smooth move, X Lax." Just like that, smooth move, X Lax. Oh, Howard, I'm, I'm... I, know, I ran out of that store practically in tears. It was just echoing in my brain. Smooth move, X Lax. Well, you know, I mean, it doesn't sound that. I mean, no, I'm the X Lax guy. It sounds great. I mean, how did she say it? How did she say it? Smooth move, X Lax. Well, that could be affectionate. Her arms are crossed, and she had grape jelly all over her, the bottom of her jeans and her shoes. Look, Howard. I mean, you you had a bad day, but you know the thing about a bad day. I mean, it's it's only a day, right? I mean, John, I mean, I feel like it's been 40 years of bad day after bad day after bad day. All these years you've known me. Like, what's one success I've ever had? What's one good day? Well, I, I mean, you know, you've had some successes, Howard. Yeah, I mean, one. One success. Okay. Um, it's kind of embarrassing, John. Ten seconds have passed. I mean, you know what? You, no, I'm really a shut-in. Okay, hang on a second. You know, you're putting me on the spot. So name something. Name some of my fantastic success stories. What, you had a bee farm? How many, how many people have ever had a, their own apiary? Yeah, right. A hunter found me nearly stung to death and naked in the middle of the woods. That was a real success story right there. That's a victory. Okay, all, all right, all right, all right, okay. Big V for victory. I mean, you were pretty successful as a high-rise window cleaner. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. I remember seeing the hold upside down as I hung by my ankle. I wasn't even five minutes into the job. Okay, ele- electrician's assistant. Right. Okay. Next. Okay. Thanks right. for bringing okay, that up. Sorry. Uh, you made you made a, uh, a sensory deprivation tank. I almost drowned and starved at the same time. Okay. You know, Howard. Actually, in just like thinking about all these things, like there's there is a common denominator. Yeah. In all of them, you didn't die. I mean, you came close a, a lot of the time, but you didn't actually die, right? I mean, there's something to be said for that. Are you trying to cheer me up with this? I mean, you're a survivor. Right? I mean, you know, a, a part of being a survivor is, you know, a kind of can-do attitude. You know, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off. I think I'd just be so much safer at home. What about your warrior spirit, Howard? You're you're always talking about. I think, he, I think he's sleeping. I think no, he's come sleeping on. What, wait, what's your warrior name again? Alan. Right, Alan. You know, what would Alan do in this? Would Alan become a shut-in? You, you, you can't shut a, a warrior beast like Alan up in a house. Well, he's used to living in caves and stuff. He can... Handle any challenge, and and so can you. You know, I think you just you just have to kind of walk this off. You know, tomorrow's a new day, and you'll go in there again, and you'll buy yourself some what was it, marmalade, and grape jelly, grape jelly, and maybe you'll talk to her. Maybe you won't. And well, if I wouldn't you buy grape jelly again because that would obviously be you know I'd get something else. I can get peanut butter. I can make a joke like you know. Should I put this on your shoes because it'll go with the jelly or something? But you see, there you go. That's the Howard Chakwitz I know. Ugh, I'm being so silly. You're always right. I don't know why I make such an ass of myself all the time. Well, no, you're not. I mean, you're just, you know, you're a very emotional man. Maybe what I'll do to thank you for your guidance and support is maybe I'll go take a little walk over to your place now and I'll go see if the stove's off. Hey, that sounds great. I'd really appreciate that. I'm responsible for the well-being of your entire building. Yes, that's right. It's very... Do you really trust me that much? Yes, I do, Howard. Your vote of confidence means much to Alan. I feel my warrior spirit rising. Well, that's... I have a mission, right? I want to make sure your stove's off. That's right. The fire could be blazing for all you know. Yes, Howard. That's why I'd like you to get going. Would you like Alan to check the fridge? Maybe the fridge? No, the fridge is fine. He'll need to feed his warrior spirit. Howard, keep Alan out of my food. I don't know if I can control him. Alan doesn't abide by rules. Alan is spelled with three L's. Alan lives by the moon. The jungle beast. He did what we all must learn to do. 
you. And you. And you. And you. Hi, is this uh, Dennis Dobson speaking? It is. Hi, Dennis. This is uh, Jonathan Goldstein. Uh, I don't know. Jonathan did... Goldstein, a uh, radio fellow, right? That, that's right, yeah. Nancy McMurphy told you I was going to be calling. She did. She let me know. She just came back from that CBC uh, corporate retreat. Yeah, that was fun. And you were the facilitator for these improv games that all of the executives were doing? My home theater, uh, mm-hmm. Uncle Yuck's Comedy Area. Uh-huh. We uh, we facilitate these corporate events. It's really fun. Gets people thinking outside the box. Gets them together in fun situations. Break down some of those walls, you know. A- anyway, uh, Nancy was really insistent that I call you for some improv lessons over the phone. Um, she she thought it would help me to to you know be funnier um, on my radio show. Comedy comes from truth. Oh yeah. It comes from honesty. Okay. Great. Well, John, here's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want you and me to just do a little improv scene together. Yeah. And then hopefully we can get you on the funny train, huh? Yeah. Uh, I'll be a doctor, and you'll be my patient. Mm Mm-hmm. Sounds like a pretty familiar situation, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe so. I mean, not so much on my radio program. So, sir, what seems to be the matter with you today? I'm not not feeling so uh, hot. Freeze. Freeze in the scene. What? Pause in the action. Pause in the action. What, what is Jonathan. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You didn't even change your voice. What, you think I should change my voice? Are you Jewish, Jonathan? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, you know what Jewish mothers are like, don't you? So here's what I want you to do. Let's go into that scene. Okay. And you, I want you to be your crazy Jewish mother. You want me to do a woman's voice? That's double comedy right there. Men playing women. Very funny. Dennis, I, I have to admit... Let I, me just show you how it's done. Why don't you be the doctor, and okay. I will be your outrageous Jewish mother, and we can just see. Okay. All right. What, what seems to be the problem? You're so skinny, Doctor. Why aren't you married? I have a lovely daughter who would love to meet you, Doctor. Okay, ma'am, I... What, Pause what? in the action. Pause in the action. Do you see how that went? But, but you, I mean... Much better, right? Well... The truth. It's just reacting honestly, as one honestly would. Yeah, I just feel like that might be a little broad, you know? Nah, it's not. It's what they're like. I've seen them on television. But, I mean, I have one. And, then I mean, you will realize that she's outrageous. Do you want to move on? Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, okay, Just think sure. about this. Let that digest. Right. Let that simmer. Okay. Uh, let's do a start another scene mm-hmm. here. Why don't I be a car salesman mm-hmm. and you be a car customer? All, All right. right. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. All let's right. do this, Jonathan. All you right. want to do some vocal warm-ups first? What does that involve? Oh, you know you need unique New York Let's launch into it. Okay. Excuse me, sir. I see that you're eyeballing this new model car. Uh, Yes, I am. Pause in the action. Okay, Jonathan. Here's what I think that scene needed. Mm Mm-hmm. Mentioning celebrities that are in the news. You know, Dennis, I have to say, I mean, I think that's kind of appealing to the lowest common denominator. I would feel to have a radio show, but I don't. Yeah. For the good of everybody, for every artist who's not in your blessed position, please. Okay, Dennis, can I just explain to you a little bit about, like, you know, what kind of stuff happens on my show? Sure, absolutely. Like, like you know, okay, no, please. all right. So. I want to hear about what you do on your show, and then I'll comedy it up. Well, I mean, just earlier, uh, I was having a conversation with my friend Howard, who, you know, he, I mean, he kind of gets himself into sort of humorous situations, like... Um, like a dog bites his butt. N- not quite that, but, you know, sometimes he'll be trying a new... I mean, like, just earlier, he uh, called me up because he decided he wanted to become a shut-in. Well, that doesn't sound like there's any jokes. You know, it was amusing. No, it probably wasn't. I and, mean, of course, I don't know what kind of voice Howard is doing. If it's a funny voice... No, no, I, I mean, it's just Howard's funny. kind of a funny guy. I mean, he's not trying to be funny or anything. He just, he's you know, he's just sort of... Why don't we do one of your Howard... Bits and I'll. Well, it's. I mean, it's not a bit. I mean, he's just. I'll be you, and you be Howard, and I'll. Uh-huh. I'll just show you how to how to mine a little comedy from this mining area that you've set up. Okay. Um. Hey. Hey, John. Yes, it's me, Jonathan Goldstein. 
I'm calling because uh, I'm going to be. Uh, I, I think I'm going to become a shut-in, John. Well, if you shut yourself in, at least you won't be in any danger of getting run over by that drunken Paris Hilton. You know her, a real trollop in a car. No, no, I'm not. I'm. That's not why I'm shutting myself in the house. I'm just sort of disillusioned with you know the the outside world. And... Okay, let's go back, Jonathan. I want you to use a word other than disillusioned. How about feeling a little poopy? I uh, let's that, go back. Okay, Dennis, that isn't anything that Howard would say. Disillusioned was that people were like what? What is this? Some sort of? Were we in some sort of science building? I'm no slouch. I mean, I I went to a very reputable state university and. I mean, I've acted in a Shakespeare before. So, you know, but I'm just saying, just just comedy it up. Just think of a comedy word and say that instead of that other word. Let's go back. I'm feeling a little poopy. <laughs> oh, and I've got the cure for that. Yeah, what's that? Booze. Glug, glug. You're suggesting that I make those glug, glug sounds? You're on the radio, right? How will people know that you're comically drinking alcohol? Well, I mean, y you know... If I were to... Can we move on? Yeah. So, Howard, how would you like to go on a double date where we switch places in the bathroom? Well, I, I don't know if I'd want to do that so much. Are you sure, Howard? It would be a very funny situation. I mean, I, I'd sort of rather talk about my, my issue right My issue right now. Okay, and what is that issue? Well, I mean... Is it funny? Why, not to me it isn't. No, not so much. I'm, I'm kind of given up on, on on ever really being able to be happy in the world. So I'm I, kicking you in your privates. I kicked you in your privates. Well, now, why would you do that? That scene was dying, Jonathan. That scene was dying. You were talking about being sad. First of all, I mean, how, how could you even kick someone over the telephone? Theater of the mind, Jonathan. Imagination. That's what we're working with here. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. It's comedy, Jonathan. Sometimes it shouldn't make sense. You're, you're Sometimes it's just things happening with people doing voices. Mm -hmm. I was saving our scene. That's what a good improv partner does. If they realize that the scene is not funny... Mm -hmm. If it's sad and devoid of comedy, right. you do what you have to do to get the laugh. If you need to kick someone in the privates over the telephone, by God, Jonathan, you need to kick them in the privates over the telephone. Mm -hmm. We've had a session, Jonathan. Maybe we can just go over what we've talked about. Maybe you can just... Why don't you this, let This me was a know. session? It's a privilege, Jonathan. Right. Okay. Why don't you just impart to me everything you've learned today? That I've learned from you? Yes. Well, I, I mean... Comedy's about real life. Yes. Rule one. Celebrities are funny. Why are they funny? Because they're real life. Exactly. Yeah. I, Dennis, I, I don't know that any of this stuff is really funny. I mean, maybe it's just a difference of taste or something. I, Why don't we go back to the doctor? I, I, I don't want to go to the doctor. If I don't let Nancy McMurphy know that you completed at least one valid comedy scene, uh, yeah. then I'm not going to get my $80. All right, fine. Hello, sir. What seems to be the problem? My, my pants keep falling down. That's great. Oh, I see you've brought someone with you. Who's that crazy character? That's Lindsay Lohan. Hello, madam. Uh, whoops. Looks like my, my pants have fallen down. End scene. Jonathan, I'm laughing. See? That's a joke. You've told your first joke. Right. Did you feel the chemistry? I kind of felt a uh, an Eddie Murphy, Joe Piscopo thing going on with that. Did you feel that? I, 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 I mean, I, I don't I mean, know. That's, I mean, are you looking for more regulars on the show? Because I think uh, what, no, what having what? me on, I mean, just doing scenes like that yeah. I mean, week after week. I, I, I don't know, Dennis. If, uh, Do you guys get lunch, like free lunches? Maybe there's like a coffee machine or something, right? On Fridays, they bring in bagels. Oh, and sounds great. I haven't had a bagel in a really long time. Yeah, no, I... I mean, I just assume I would get, you know, a producer. Great. I hate, I hate... On Wiretap Today, you heard Rob Kuttner, author of Apocalypse How, Jordan Morris, and Howard Chakowitz, whose band Nutsack will be releasing their first album, Failed Musician, this spring. Among other songs, it will feature the vocal stylings of Howard Chakowitz, singing, I Hate Everything. 
Wiretap is produced by Jonathan Goldstein with Mira Bergwintonic and Carolyn Warren. Production assistance from Crystal Duhame. Tune into Wiretap Sunday at 1, 4 Pacific Time, and Wednesday evening at 11.30. You can also hear Wiretap across North America on Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Reach us through our website at cbc.ca slash wiretap, where you can download the latest wiretap ringtone. It doesn't have to make sense. It's comedy, Jonathan. But you're, you're Sometimes so- it's just things happening with people doing voices. Announce your enthusiasm for comedy with every ring of your phone. Until next week, take it away, Howard. Sing along. Till I finally understood That society just ain't no good It ain't who you are, baby But what kind of job you got I hate, I hate, I hate everything I hate me, myself, and I hate everything I hate, I hate, I hate everything